Hello YouTube, Tim here with an unboxing. I'm very, very excited to show what I've got inside here. Now I've got this flipped over to cover up the, uh, the names and uh, addresses of all involved. Other than that, let's just take a look at it from the outside. The box appears to be pretty well battered, and uh, that's disappointing. There's a hole poked in the one side. It appears to have been at least marginally crushed here, as well as up here near the top where the box does want to hinge and bend upwards. I'm going to open it and see if there's any damage to whatever's inside, and I, I sincerely hope there's not, because I've been waiting for this, and it's sad when a product from China can arrive sooner than a product from Wheaton, Illinois. All it had to do was cross Missouri, and the one from China arrived in perfect condition. So let's just see what we have here. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over so I don't have to continue guarding the, uh, the mailing addresses there. Then let's slit it at the end and tr oh, more damage to the box. Great. Well, that's what postal insurance is for, I suppose. Okay. The ends were secured with strapping tape, which is probably a good choice. So let's go and see if we can coax whatever's inside on out. First a little bit of earthaware padding. That's probably didn't do all that much good. A little bit more at the center spare string and what appears to be, so far, an undamaged bow. For what it's worth, here's the string. It has a knocking point. I've never I've never actually seen one of these on a bow string before, so that's kind of interesting. The string itself. And let's get down to the actual bow, because that's really where it's at. This is what this video is all about. I'm just terribly excited. Let me get rid of all of the other things on the table, and we can focus our attention on what's really important here. So here it is. Let me go ahead and undo the string at one side, and we'll see exactly what happened if the bow is intact. Now, I haven't told you what this is yet. Or, okay, you probably saw the title. I got a Grozer bow, a biocomposite bow, bought from somebody else in, uh, and they were in Wheaton. So, in theory, this should have been a quick and easy shipment. In practice, it seems to have, I mean, it was due on the 4th, and it only arrived much, much later than that. Well, there we go. Okay, just looking at it now, The only damages that I observe on first look is what was in originally indicated. Some of the leather around here was damaged by the string. That's to be expected. There's some sinew reinforcement here. There's a leather covering, which actually appears to be uh, natural leather. I can't quite tell, but it feels it. And here's the horn plate on the back. This is, uh, as a biocomposite bow, a little bit different than a synthetic uh, resin bow or fiberglass bow and also a little bit different from a horn bow somewhere in between really it's a pretty cool invention of grozers for starters if these are grozers original strings I'd like to say I'm not terribly impressed with the the quality of the worksmanship now granted that's the least important thing here who cares about the uh, how pretty this the string looks but still just as a sign of fit and finish that's the single prettiest bit of serving that I saw. Other than that, it looks a little bit rough, and the other one just has large tufts of who knows what sticking out the end. So that doesn't inspire confidence. Particularly when this bow is an 85-pound monster. Yeah, so it's a little bit on the heavy side. This is as close to a traditional weight bow that I could get at the moment. 
I am looking at getting a real, authentic, 100% authentic Turkish bow with horn, wood, and sinew. So what makes the biocomposite bow unique? For starters, it has three prime layers. There is a wood core, and the, the uh, sias, of course, are wood. The next important thing to notice is there is horn on the, ba belly, uh, yeah, the belly of the bow. It's, uh, what I've read is that it's a pressed horn plate, so I don't understand how that differs from any other piece of horn because, well, you bend, you heat them all and you flatten them into plates and that's about it. So this may only differ in that it's not rounded so much as flattened. Just like the sinew that's applied to the back of the bow, as I understand it, is processed first into a sheet of sinew and then it's applied between the wood, the sinew, and the horn. Between each of those layers, I also am given to understand there's a layer of fiberglass. So it's very similar to a traditional bow and very similar to a modern bow. I would say the horn and the belly is just gorgeous. I find that attractive. I see little bands of sinew reinforcement here at both ends where the kasan, the kasan eye is. I wonder, I've read about something like this where at certain portions through here the entire bow had been sort of drilled through and a bolt had been placed in and so this could simply be reinforcement at that transition point. Very interesting, looks very cool, the color is great, everything about it just looks yeah, pretty spectacular. It's freezing cold right now. It just came in and it's 12 degrees outside. So I have no intention of going anywhere near uh, stringing this, this little beauty right now, but I will in the near future. I will string it, I will shoot it, and I have some other goodies to show you. Something that came from China, something that came from Turkey. So thanks for watching. I hope this is interesting. And uh, I'm very, very excited to be able to, to share this with you. And I'll be even more excited if I'm able to string and shoot this successfully. So thank you very much for watching, YouTube. Subscribe if you like this, and come back for more.